Welcome to ClueCore Omics Explorer. In this tutorial, we will show you how to identify discriminating variables, visualize, and save the results. You're expected to be familiar with the basic functionality of ClueCore Omics Explorer and the user interface. ClueCore Omics Explorer includes a wide range of statistical tests such as t-test, ANOVA, two-way analysis, and various types of regression. And the extended statistics mode supports methods such as Welch, Mann-Whitney, Kruskal-Wallis, and Lima. The underlying framework is a general linear model, so it is possible to construct more complex models. Read more about this in the How to Use ANOVA document. Now let's start. The ClueCore test data set will be used and loaded from the Help menu. The demonstration will be done by performing a two-group comparison based on a student's t-test. Observe in the sample tab that there is an annotation called treatment. It has three values, placebo, drug one, and drug two. Color the plot to see the groups. Change the color of the placebo group to yellow by double-clicking in the color box. And we will restrict this analysis to the time point post-treatment. We do this by unticking the group pre-treatment. As you can see in the plot, half of the samples disappear, and we are now only working with the post-treatment samples. We can see that the treatment groups are already clustering together, indicating that there are differences between them. In this example, we will first show how to identify the variables that discriminate the samples in the placebo group from all other samples. Choose the preferred plot for the visualization. The PCA plot, as well as the heat map plot, is good to use. In this example, we will change to a heat map in the method tab. The heat map may be configured in many ways to fit your needs. This is done in the view tab. To see all samples and all variables, we press the auto buttons in the size selection. Then we color the samples, the columns in the heat map, according to the sample annotation treatment and order them according to hierarchical clustering to be able to easily detect that the statistical test discriminates the groups as expected. To identify the variables, select to label them according to the symbol variable annotation. Now perform the test. Select two group comparisons in the statistics window and then select the annotation treatment and the group placebo to identify the variables that discriminates the placebo group from the other two groups. Let the other value remain as all, meaning that the placebo group is compared with all the rest of the samples, both drug one and drug two treated as one group. Please note that if you are to select either drug one or drug two as a second value, the statistical test will be restricted to only this group. If you want to exclude a group from the analysis, we recommend that you also untick it in the sample tab so that the plot only shows the active groups. There are two ways to determine how many variables should be kept after using the statistical filtering. Either you enter a cutoff value, preferable in the Q value box, Q value is also known as false discovery rate, or use the slider to interactively select the number of variables to keep. The number of active variables is always presented in the lower left corner. A good methodology is to first select a cutoff that represents a relevant statistical significance. An example would be a Q value of 0.5. The exact cutoff will vary with your specific experiment and needs. The result is directly visible in the heat map plot and you can inspect the outcome. In this case, we found seven genes with a Q value below 0.05. The combination of the slider selection and the instant visual feedback makes it easy to fine tune the results. The active variables are available in the active variable list in the variable tab. This list is updated when you change a cutoff or move a slider. To store the result, make a copy of the list and rename it. Populate the result list with relevant columns from the column selector. Let's add the gene symbol, p-value, q-value. Then to save the list, click export list to file. When you export the list, you have several options. 
The default format includes information of when the list was created and also what types of statistical tests were active. If you plan to use the file for downstream analysis, use the plain text setting to get a file that is easier to import. Modifying the test is straightforward. Combine the t-test with a fold change filter by using the fold change slider. Add the fold change column to the active variable list and copy the list again and rename it. Images are also easily exported. Right-click in the plot that you want to export and select Export Image. You can select various export formats and resolutions. You can also include additional information such as the color legend. When a list of discriminating variables is identified, it can be a good idea to study the individual variables in detail. One option is the box plot. Select the box plot and define the x-axis to be organized according to the treatment annotation. Select to define the y-axis by using the y-axis tool and select the result list. It is also possible to select individual variables. There are more settings available in the Options tab. You can, for example, show p-values for post-hoc analysis, such as tuck key, Bonferroni, and more. The box plot is interactive, and to demonstrate this, we deselect one of the treatment groups, and the plot is immediately updated to reflect the change settings. To summarize, in this tutorial, we have demonstrated how to identify discriminating variables using a t-test and fold change, to set up different types of plots, and to save results. For further analysis support, there are more video tutorials on our website. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching and good luck with your analysis.